So to go from that to Hollywood and Martin and Lewis, yes. <laughs> what, <laughs> what was what was that? What was well, that like? Well, the first film I did was Forever Female, a gentleman over here, right, right, has a copy of that with yeah. Bill Holden and Ginger Rogers. Yeah. So the second one was, it was Martin and was Lewis. Martin and Lewis yeah. and well, the Bill Holden. I mean, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about Bill Holden. What was that experience like as a young actress coming to Hollywood and working with Bill Holden? You know what? I was this huge fan of his, um, and he was not happy doing that movie. It was written by the Epstein brothers, who you know wrote Casablanca. Oh yes. And it was a very kind of inside theater, New York theater. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to do the part. I found out later, and as a result, he had just done what Sunset Stop, Boulevard. Uh, well, Stop, let's see, 50, 53, that was probably Stalag 17, or between Sunset Boulevard and Stalag 17. And so he, there. you know, he didn't really want to do this. Right. And so I sort of got a little bit of the brunt of that. And oh, that's He was in, not in a good yeah. time in his life, really. Right, he right. wasn't. And a Many years later, I was in a restaurant in Westwood, Mateo's, mm -hmm. sitting in a booth, and I see Bill Holden over by the bar, and he kind of, you know, he's looking mm -hmm. my way, or our way, and suddenly he comes to the table, mm -hmm. and he leans down, and he says to me, Pat, I want to apologize for my behavior on Forever Female. He said, I was, I was not happy doing the show, but I took it all out on you, and I, I never got over that. I was well, that so shows thrilled. you what a gracious gentleman I was he so is. thrilled that he did that. What was that, like 20 years later or something? No, like maybe it? 10 or 15. 10 years, but yeah. still, that, oh, that's but great. But it was the nicest, nicest thing, because he, he just was in a, a bad way, and he sure. felt this part maybe wasn't, wasn't good what enough. he wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, wasn't yeah. what he wanted to yeah. do at that particular yeah. time. But that was the thing then. I mean, actors uh, were under he contract. Was under contract. And he, you had to, he had a lot to of times it. they had to do things that they didn't want to do yeah. and uh, so forth. So so from that, it was Martin and Lewis. Yeah, and, uh, I what, love those two guys. Oh, what, what, was that, been, what was that experience? Well, I, was, I worked with Jerry, uh, I think, on the first one, which was 3D, and they showed it at a big 3D thing. Oh, and yeah, that's darling. right, the, the 3D festival at yeah. the Egyptian. Yes, I remember that. I went to that. That's right. Right, and yeah. The, yeah, and I took all our kids and grandkids, and uh, they got a big kick out of that. They'd right. never seen 3D, and they really hadn't seen their grandmother. Right. And so, uh, mm -hmm. but that was great. So Jerry couldn't have been nicer to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I worked opposite Dean in mm -hmm. Hollywood or Bust, right. which was, uh, he... He was great, and I, I just was thrilled to be working with them. I mean, they were amazing. Those well, they two. were huge. They were huge. They were the biggest. They were gigantic. You know, yeah, they were the biggest thing in the bit. So you were, you felt, you must have felt at this point your career was just off and running like well, a Roman candle, or you know, or did you just take it one day at a time or one picture at a time? Yeah, we did Red Garters. We did that. Then right, I went to Universal and did a bunch right. there, yeah, including yeah. There's Always Tomorrow with the. Barbara Sandwick and uh, how was Fred how Henry. was Barbara to work with? I mean, I've heard that Cruz loved her, uh, but if you were working with her as an actor, if if she didn't feel you were giving your all, she would let you know it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard you know, that. But I, how was she to work well, with? Well, she was she was everything you've ever heard. I mean, wow. she was just the most beloved and so brilliant. And I was play the daughter mm -hmm. of Fred. No, the uh, the girlfriend, girlfriend of, the, what, of Fred McMurray, and yeah. she would came into town and had an affair, or tried to have an affair with the father. <laughs> and the, yeah, and which and it's a wonderful film if you ever get a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. It's really become kind of a cult film because yes. of that director. Mm -hmm. There's always tomorrow, Barbara Stanley, but she couldn't have been nicer to me, and I was like. Um, you know, I was just watching this woman and the way she came onto a set early before anybody else said hi to the crew, practically knew all the crew's kids' names. <laughs> and, you know, would they do anything for her? And it yeah. was a great lesson for me on how to, to treat see, people, yeah, and how to, to, see how to how carry to, yourself, yeah, how to and behave. So forth. Yeah. And so I had a great time with her Wonderful. Um, and tried to watch her scenes and her work and I mm -hmm. I hadn't seen the film and I when I saw it 
at this, at a, they had a little thing, a whole show about it, and uh, I did a lot of scenes with her, which I'd kind of forgotten that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I actually uh, did work with her, and of course, mm -hmm. it was heaven. Yeah, I, I also heard Fred McMurray was one of the nicer people yeah. uh, around. Yeah, I did a couple of other television things with him. Did you very do a, quiet, very yeah. quiet man. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, who was it, uh, Gene Reynolds, who I interviewed uh, not long ago, and we talked about Mike Curtiz, and then we segued into My Three Sons, and he mm -hmm. had some funny, he, he said Fred McMurray was just so nice and so skillful, but uh, always a close man with a buck. Uh, uh, that's what his uh, reputation yeah, always, was. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never went to lunch he, with him. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 told me some, he told me some funny stories about really? Fred of buying a drink in the days when drinks cost a buck fifty, and then breaking a 20 and then leaving the 20 on the bar and Fred they were talking and Fred's eyes kept coming back to it he was nervous it was going to be a tip for the bartender oh, <laughs> he kept yeah. looking at it <laughs> and he said I just let played with him for a while and I picked up the money so he wouldn't worry <laughs> but anyway so in your movie career you you really made that transition you started out in television and then after a while you went back into television mm -hmm. was that something gradual or did it happen fast for well, you? well there weren't really any roles coming along film wise right, right. a lot of competition at that time probably sure. piper laurie was uh, there was a film i really really wanted to do and thought i might mm -hmm. but wonderful actress piper laurie oh, but the, you terrific. know so I wanted to work. And, yeah, the and studio system was dying yes. and contracting and fewer yes. movies and that letting all the contract players go and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So, well, you really found a home in television, and I still remember, uh, you know, I'm, I am old enough to remember, Please Don't Eat the Daisies, oh, and I think great, a lot of people great. out there, too, just one yes. of those great films. And uh, how did you land that part, or was it written for you? Oh, it's kind of fun. Um, Napoleon Solo. Uh, Man the from Uncle. Man, Man from, from Uncle. Uncle. Yes, yes. I did the pilot for Man from Uncle, mm -hmm. and they liked it at <laughs> Man from Uncle Fun mm -hmm. Show. And the sponsor of that mm -hmm. was, you know, it was always one sponsor right, for, right, for right. a show. Sure. And the sponsor for that one wanted, uh, mm -hmm. found out they were. It, no, please don't eat the daisies. They asked me to do, right. and this particular sponsor that did Man from Uncle mm -hmm. wanted to do the they show. They wanted too, to be so the sponsor kind of for it right. together, okay. and and we actually ran about two and a half years. Which right. then you did thirty nine shows a year. Right. Now I don't think they do anything that many now. Well, it seems like shows are on like for like a matter of weeks and then they disappear or they endure it. I don't think there's a lot of patience for shows to build an audience yeah, now I know, like, they, I know. like they used to be. And yeah. we yeah, we had rough we had some rough competition, but we had a one we really had a good time doing that show. And I bring my kids again, they were kind of the ages of some of the kids mm -hmm. in the show on uh, to the set because I, I miss them so much when right. I was working that, that hard on the series. Uh -huh. But and they loved the show. They came you know, and the kids all got along. So that was it. That That's was great. Good.